there, this is my review for Season 10, Episode 2, Recovery. So first up, the case file of the episode. The beloved Midge, who we all know and love, is dead in a car in a pond. Go. So I actually really enjoyed this case. I love how we got to see the armory. I just love any time we get to see more of NCIS. I think it'd be great if we got to visit this set once more in a future episode, just for them to bring it back before they knock it down. I also like the interrogation scene with that that crazy misogynist guy. I thought it was entertaining and we got a little bit of Tony Ziva in this episode which was nice. I also think this episode had a really great twist. I really like how they used Judy in this episode. You think she's just there to paint the walls and make goo goo eyes with Tony but no. Twist, she's the killer. This could have gone wrong but they made it work and I love how they tied everything together with the whole fragrance thing. This episode had a really solid case file. I was very impressed. Also in this episode, we had a visit from Dr. Wolf, who you may recognize as Loki from Crossing Jordan. He has apparently crawled out of one of the many cracks in the orange walls and is tasked with making sure that every last person in NCIS is still relatively sane. I kind of feel bad for the guy. So he has saved the most screwed up people for last, that of course being Team Gibbs. Thankfully, Dr. Cranston has given him a cheat sheet featuring tribal names, which is actually really great. Although, why isn't Dr. Cranston in this kind of episode? I mean, was the actress not available? Sean Astin? Jamie Lee? Anyone? It seems we had like a whole bunch of head shrinkers last season and now we've just got another one. Okay. So Loki does his rounds, making sure everybody's mentally stable, and his best scene is probably with Vance. Because Rocky gets like this great mini monologue about how he's so guilt-ridden that he just, he drove a bomb into the Navy Yard. Poor guy. I really love how I started out hating Vance and now he's just like one of my babies. Another big part of this episode was the Bet Noir Redux. So we got a pretty good little opening in this episode, although I do think it could have been darker. If memory serves me correctly, in the nightmare sequence in Bat Noir had her with like a Y cut and her chest cavity exposed and it was like really crazy. I feel like this would have been a really good plot for like the Halloween episode and they could have made it like really scary. Having said that, I really did enjoy the storyline in the episode. It's hard not to love Abby and her big green eyes of emotion. Also, this episode may have finally convinced me that Polly Pratt is in fact aging in reverse. Oh my god. So we got to see Abby's brother Kyle again, and I love him. He is adorable, and it's so freaky seeing them next to each other because they look so much alike. And he's a hugger. He's like gender bender Abby. And the last scene was just pure gold and then she's like asleep at the end. It was just the perfect ending to this episode. However, I was so disappointed that we didn't get to see the scene where she reveals to him that like she's his sister and they're adopted. Isn't that what we've been building to? It's like you don't watch an episode of Maury and then just change the channel right before he's about to say, you are not the father. I mean, was this scene like in the script? I mean, I know it's like a difficult scene to do, but it's it's important. It's a big deal. I, I just want to know his reaction. I mean, does he does he know he's adopted? Does he know who their biological parents are? Just so many questions. I mean, if they film this scene and then they cut it later, I mean, why? <laughs> so I'm gonna give this episode four out of a possible five calf pows. I love this episode, but I think that they might have tried to just cram too much into it. I think they should have had Dr. Wolf and his psych evals in this episode and then had Abby and her brother and her nightmares just kind of carry into another episode. That way we could just explore everything just a little bit more. In this episode, the big man upstairs issues marching orders that he wants everything back to normal as soon as possible. Are the writers under the same pressure? I know that the fallout from the explosion is going to reverberate through much more episodes, probably through the rest of the season. Things won't be back to normal by next week. But they wrapped up a lot in 44 minutes. Maybe a little bit too much. One final thought. If you watched this episode and you didn't want to play with Ziva's hair, you're probably dead inside.